Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, before we go on here, I want to take a look here at TFNN.com. We can go over here to newsletters. Now, this is the opening call, folks. Okay, and Basel just came out with a webinar at the end of last month. This is sectors and stocks just coming off major lows from 2023, ready for even more upside action. This is the best way to kind of start your year uh, trading. Get, figure out what you want to do with your portfolio. If you're just starting trading, right, you've been following us, kind of just trying to get some more information of what we're doing, I would really recommend subscribing to the opening call newsletter from Basil Chapman, okay? This is a 30-day money-back guarantee if it's your first time. Yeah, you nothing to risk here, all right? You get access to all of his old webinars. These things run, you know, like right here we have one from 90 minutes, we have one for two hours. I mean, these are, are really worth it, guys. If you have not checked them out yet, I really recommend. And I believe we have Basil on the phone right now. Basil, can you hear me? You certainly have me on the phone, and actually, I have me on the uh, on the mic. But uh, there you go. Good to speak with you, and a happy new year. And you're doing a great job. Yeah, I can't believe how much you've added to TFNN. Uh, came in Basil. as a novice, and you are superb, doing fabulous work. Thank you so much, Basil. And and really listening to all you guys online has just really helped a lot. So uh, I really appreciate that, and happy new year. How's the weather? Um, over in the New England, I heard you guys got some interesting weather coming to you. We we did have a uh, very. Uh, it depends where you were in, in Massachusetts. Western Mass got blasted with about uh, twelve inches, uh, but we only got about two three inches, and it was soft and it kind of went away uh, on the at least in the streets where the sidewalks are still quite snowy. Yeah, there you but, go. Uh, yeah. We're getting yeah, some tough we winds here tonight. That. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh okay. Well. Good luck. Well, Basil, what are we uh, looking at today? So I thought I'd just give a little overview here. So um, we actually are short the Dow. Okay. Um, but in the long term, we have positions that go back to March, long term positions go back to March of 2020. We also have the diamonds and we have the diamonds plus the three times long. You shouldn't have that, but we've kept it all the way from October of this past year from the, from the lows. Um, but within that, just this choppiness just says to me that there's a really good chance we've got at best a sideways cons up, up, upper level consolidation. And you can see by this daily chart here of the Dow, this rectangle. But when I look at this weekly chart, this is a single leg from the October 27th low. That was the 27th of October where the uh, Dow was at 32,327 and all the other indexes were at their lows. This move went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 weeks with higher highs. That means I call, in the Chapman Wave methodology, I call this a floating letter until it makes a peak. Well, technically, I could consider it a peak F, meaning, whoa, whoa, whoa you've got to be careful here. But the strength of the technicals in the weekly are so strong that I have to call it a, a possible new leg A, maybe even a peak A if we don't make a new recovery high this week. And that just says to me, on the short term, we might have some volatility. But so far, unless there's really bad news, I, and we haven't had, you know, the, the, the yields are still more at their lows than the highs. Mm -hmm. um, copper, you mentioned copper. Copper's been weak, but in fact, there are a lot of things. For instance, gold is part of an inflationary look at the markets, and that's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to tell you that all the things that would be very negative on the short term, I see little smatterings of that. So I have a position just for subscribers, and this is – I. I I, I would call it a hedge more than an actual a directional move until this nine period moving average, this green line. Let me just put it on this chart right here. Until this green line starts to go pink by going under the 14, the nine period goes under the 14 period moving average. We have been in this green line since the um, 3rd of November. And that green line is the nine period moving average. And it's just been, I call this the, Indicator of last resort. All the other indicators could be failing. As long as this remains positive, it means that there's internal strength. So I am anticipating that we do get some kind of a pullback over the that we that the weekly chart that I showed you the spectacular move up actually does make a peak 
this week with a lower high than last week. And then we'll look at see how we have a digestive phase. So within that context, my question was, on August the 1st, we actually went short the Dow on a shorter term basis. And that was right then. I said, we're going to have to wait for that nine period moving average to cross negative. Eventually it did. Then, of course, we tumbled down to the 32,000s. I don't see this quite the same at this point. I see a lot of support levels between 37,000 in the Dow and 36,500. But I do see very similar action here with this little double top like we had over there. Hmm. So I'm watching it very closely because it's a good sign when you have Boeing tanking. Yes, not that it's a good sign for Boeing. I'm just saying sure. that Boeing was sharply lower. And yet the Dow managed a really strong move up yesterday. Yeah. And so now you've got a few more Dow stocks that are weakening. And that just says to me we've got to be a bit careful. But I heard you speaking a, a little while ago about uranium. Yes. And I thought, oh, that, that is interesting because we have a uranium stock. UEC is a symbol. Uh, this is called Uranium Energy Corporation. And I said to subscribers, every year we, we – not every single year, but a lot of the years that we've had over the last five, six years, we've had some kind of single-digit stock or very low-priced stock that just seemed to find its niche. <laughs> and that, and if you look at the way uranium, this uranium energy corporation, it went to a new recovery high. It's not an all-time high. That goes all the way back to 2010, where it hit 748. But in the interim, it's been all the way down to a low that was made March of uh, 2020 at 35 cents, and now it's yeah. trading at 6.80. And you can look at this cup formation, and all the technicals are still very strong. And I said to subscribers, this could very well be one of those situations where, under all the conditions that should take this particular stock down, it just it defies gravity and it keeps holding well. And look at this weekly chart how it's walking this green nine-period moving average, which is way above the 14. So I, uranium, I think, is telling, if you go to the uranium, uh, URNM, the uranium uh, ETF, this is a Sprott uranium minus ETF, very strong move today. It was not acting, the chart didn't look quite as good as the UEC, but now it's acting very well. And if it takes out the high that was made, oh, look at this, if it takes out the high that was made, on the, eighth, the week of the 8th of December, which is at 50.55, if it just goes to 50.56, that breaks out. And that becomes a new leg C in the weekly chart and extends the leg C in the monthly and says, wow, there's a chance that we could go, um, you know, we could start to go into the uh, 55 area over the next uh, month or so. So it's such, this market is so diverse. It's so bifurcated. Uh, that you, if you're in the wrong area, you're just wondering what everybody's talking about when they say things are looking very good. And if you're in the right area, uh, you just say, wow, that, that's fantastic. Absol very diverse action, yes. Absolutely. And, and Basil, stay right there because I want to pick your brain a little bit more on uranium. When I when I saw that you uh, had picked that in the, in the newsletter, I was so hyped because I, I just think there's so much potential um, for that commodity. But uh, Basil, please stay right there. We'll be right back. Sure. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I am with Basil Chapman right now. Uh, before we went to the break, Basil, we're talking a little bit about uh, uranium and how you're looking at it. Well, I want to say, too, um, on some you know fundamental stuff uh, as well, the DOE uh, has issued uh, requests to get uh, basically some test uranium, right? They want to enrich from 5% up to 20%, so this is really big, and a lot of these uranium guys are uh, taken off. So um, just wanted to put that in there because I thought it was good uh, so information I, as well. I, I like the, the way you, you tie the, the fundamentals to the technicals because if the, if the fundamentals are improving or strong or weak, that, in fact, does impact the chart's potential. Sure, absolutely. So in this particular instance, the reason why I kept saying – I love the way uh, the uranium, especially the UEC stock that we have, um, is a the, why they're acting very, very well. But most importantly, it's as if they've ignored the marketplace, the overall market that is a stock market. They're in their own niche at nice. this particular point. And I think that that's really important. For instance, um, we, we have Microsoft from the 338 level. We've had very nice trades in between. But... 
Um, once it goes sideways, uh, there's a pattern mm. that I call the lowercase h. In other words, you come down, then you make an arch formation. You hold the left side low, and then you make another h. Mm. And that can go on for a little while. That's like a rectangle formation just going sideways. So that's a con that could be considered a consolidation on a purely technical level. AI has been talked about for months, almost all year <laughs> through 2023. And yet when you look at the AIQ, uh, we're actually along the AIQ, which is the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF. I don't think it's done so fantastically I, from the talk. If you had, to, if you had a, a Google uh, search for the word uh, or w the two letters AI, I mean, you would see the volume. It would be out of out of the world, out of this world. I can't right. even imagine how many times it would have been mentioned. Therefore, you would think, think appropriately that whatever you're following should have that kind of demand. But I, I must tell you, I, and Microsoft, Microsoft's telling me that the whole thing with AI, just in the shorter term, this is a rest period, a digestive phase. So um, that's what I'm saying. This rotation through the different sectors. It's really uh, fascinating and important. Yeah, what a great thing to tie in as well, right? Like you're you're finding these stocks that are being resistant towards the greater move, and that's like through these technicals, you know. And that's what's yes. so that is what's so valuable about you know the Chapman wave and and all the technicals as well, as long as you know they're done properly by good uh, practitioners and technicians. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal stuff. Yeah. So here's, an, I, oh. here's another thing I thought I was listening to you a little earlier. You had mentioned Steel Dynamics. Yes. Steel Dynamics is, is, a, is a stock I followed for years. I don't think we've ever owned it, but for some <laughs> reason, I, I, the, there's a reason why it used to be that way and it kind of remained that way in the, in the last uh, two years. You can see this monthly chart. You see the way it moves up magnificently, but then it has a pretty serious decline. Yes. And then it goes straight up. And then it takes its time as a big, so it's yes. the declines that kind of worry me. It's not that, you know, if you got it down this particular, you know, sometimes we get a stock down the lows. I'm, I'm prepared to try to survive the vicissitudes of all the decline, you know, the sunning <laughs> waves. But in this case, it would be tough if you, if you got in at any point on the upside move. I know. And you weren't prepared for the downside. And yet here it is making new, uh, it makes higher highs and higher lows. That's, you know, that's a pretty good looking chart in the shorter term. Here's your peak E and it's pulled back making this inverted uh, V-shaped pattern. So it's just taking a digestive phase. But I always, whoops, I like to always talk about the steel stocks. And you had mentioned steel stocks. Look, the steel stocks, the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Look at this beautiful, I call this the inside track. Here's a monthly chart on the right. You see the little green line and a little uh, tiny little uh, channel, yeah. pink line. That's what I call the channel wave inside track repellent zone. Once it breaks above it, it becomes the support level and becomes uh -huh. a propellant. And look at the way every time for the last uh, a year, yes, exactly a year, every time it's got close to this pink line, it pulls back. But it is making higher highs and higher lows. And I think that that's really telling me that the economy, because you cannot have still stocks moving up if the economy the sub economy hasn't been doing quite well. Sure. So when I look at it this way, I think that this is a this fits exactly the scenario I'm thinking we're in right now. A digestive phase after a really spectacular November and December. You you need a breather. It's just important to you know take a breath, get ready for the next big move, and that's kind of I think where we are. Yeah, absolutely. And and even with still dynamics, you know, you kind of bring up a, a fear I have with it, right? And I, I focus just mainly on still dynamics because I traded it for so long and I got to kind of understand how it worked. But you know, you had these like, you had a pretty significant trading range from about, you know, 100 up to 110 and it was so predictable, right? As, as you're even saying, you get these high highs, you bite on that movement up, you know, and you don't, <laughs> you, you, as you say, you can't have like the uh, kind of strength to, to hold it on the way down. You know, you, you would see this constant movement, but then we had this break through at the 100 level, which was really support for that stock for quite a while. That was very good action, yes. Yes, and, but what was so interesting, and, you, you know, it, it broke down that support level on, on quite significant volume, like for what it usually traded at, and that was a little bit strange to me, and I had thought that, you know, this was a surefire thing, that we were setting up for lower prices, but it, it completely 
you know, it, it kind of defied that, I would suppose, right? And as you're saying, you're really seeing that. You get a nice run up, a pullback, and then a run up again to higher highs. And I, I think that's what's so appealing, at least, you know, currently with this stock. So, so you know, you had mentioned earlier that what my, my web my last webinar, mm -hmm. and it's actually a viable webinar. I said this is not an exact timing type webinar. I want this as an educational one. Yes. And I said what we are looking for are what are the areas, the laggards, the stocks and the ETFs that were really uh, poor going into the, the lows of 2023. Are they coming through? Are they about to start a new move up and to become leaders for the first quarter of 2024? 20, uh, so for my newsletter, uh, we've been, we're have been trying to find those sectors and stocks and ETFs that really kind of just, they were very poor. They're off everyone's radar. This is when I like to get them. I love and it. if we're able to get them kind of at the lows, uh, it gives you leeway on the upside when you get those, as I call them, the vicissitude, those down moves that suddenly come about. If you get them right, it means you can survive that kind of decline. And as long as they're moving to higher highs and higher lows. So this is a very important period. I think people should not be afraid. Get your get your little kitty ready. Get your, your stock list, the stocks that maybe you missed <laughs> on the way up before. And you say, when they come back down, these are fabulous companies. You know, that's the reason why we got Microsoft, because it's just an right. incredible company. We were able to get it near the lows. And uh, now we've got that room to say, well, we've got a little leeway. Um, if it does this digestive phase, that's fine. But it's important to be able to identify, if you can, st you know, the, the, the ones that were terrible losers that could become, at least in the intermediate term, better stocks or better better leading stocks in this particular instance so that if the market does pull back as I anticipate on the shorter term um, you know we'll see what happens and the semiconductors are probably going to be the big clue here we'll see what happens with them yeah I love the thesis behind that but Basil thank you so much for joining me and having this conversation it's, it's always a pleasure seriously I really appreciate it thank you Jacob take care and, Basil uh, it's always a pleasure to listen to you thank, thank you, you. And remember, folks, go out right here, TFNN.com, newsletters, the opening call by Basil Chapman, 30-day money-back guarantee on the first time you subscribe. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back.